My name's Steve Backley, I'm a sportsman. I've been competing at the Javelin for over 15 years. My main success over the years has been at major championships. I'm happy to say that I have a number of medals from Commonwealth, European, World and Olympic Games. This happened a few moments ago. Steve Backley down in third place. He was the last thrower. The last throw of the competition. And the big man did it in sensational form. That yellow line was at 80 metres. The white line was the leading throw so far. And even his fellow competitors said, we cannot live with that. One of his greatest... Whilst competing at major championships, I have often wondered why the real battle for the places hasn't started until very late on in the competition. Any doubts about whether Steve Backley is still a world-class javelin thrower were all put behind them with this one Some or even most of my competitors were running out of energy and therefore unable to respond to my improvement. Quite a few times during the fifth and sixth round, but it didn't matter. In the end, there was only one thrower in it. This change in position during the very final stages of competition is a characteristic common to many sports. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. A good performance is based on the perfect development of special abilities and skills. To achieve optimum performance, it is necessary to have a solid grounding in the physical requirements for your event. These sessions consist of various exercises with weights, sprinting, jumping and throwing using a variety of equipment and of course for the javelin thrower, lots of javelin throwing. When an athlete wants to specialise, he must first of all have good basic conditioning. The end product is very rarely diagnosed as to having poor basic preparation. Injuries and stagnation often occur late in the training cycle, but people rarely look to the lack of basic conditioning as the culprit. The aim is not only to present new exercises, but also to help you with your imagination with the training program, therefore teaching you to help yourself. Although I am a javelin thrower, the material is not only for other javelin throwers. The purpose is to show good athletic movement, which is necessary for all sports. Before we start with the more serious stuff, we must of course get our bodies ready. We must first of all warm up generally and then stretch the isolated muscles that we will be using. But remember, the most important thing when it comes to stretching is to be technically correct. One of the most important tasks in the initial general conditioning phase is the development of the aerobic system, which provides the perfect circulation for the muscles of the body. This forms the basis of the regeneration process. The aerobic capacity is developed by prolonged submaximal exercise at the appropriate intensity. The training session must be well planned to be optimally effective.
The suggested varied program is prepared in such a way that the individual activities will follow each other in a systematic way. It will be appropriate to do a session of activity for up to one and a half to two hours. Jogging or running for at least 20 minutes would be a normal preparation, but for many people this is boring. So I try to break the running stereotype by including a string of simple exercises which are important for development of coordination and have a positive effect on compensating for the monotonous mechanical running action. Additionally, these exercises are more demanding than just pure jogging and enable the arterial pulse rate to reach the required 140 to 170 beats per minute more easily. But be careful, remember that observing the arterial pulse rate is only for guidance. The subjective feeling of the athlete and his own personal feedback is probably a more important factor when it comes to planning the session. We must look for the optimal feeling during the first 20 minutes of this warm-up. Too high an intensity will ultimately punish us to the level where we can't continue with an effective training session. On the other hand, we don't want to be overcautious and not get a thorough workout during that first 20 minutes. heart rate of 120 to 130 beats per minute for example would be a typical regeneration session rather than the sign of a required load which is needed for developing the physiological potential of a sportsman. Before we began the introductory aerobic exercises it was enough only to stretch the basic muscles. The more difficult tasks, however, in the further exercises, a more thorough preparation is required. Many sports people start their stretching session with the back of their thighs or hamstrings. I personally would not endorse this. All too often we tend to forget about the more important side of the leg, which is the front of the thigh. Here there is often insufficient elasticity and it is therefore the cause of many problems. Yoga teaches us that rotation is the basis for a healthy body, so we shall try to focus on it. The head is the centre that manages the movement and therefore we must keep it in the right position. Do not forget about those crucial muscles in the neck. Technical perfection, even for the elementary movements, is critical when there can be as little as a thousandth of a second which determines success or failure.
Low intensity exercise is recommended for this stage of training, which gives us a chance to establish perfect control of our bodies. In addition, the necessary concentration of the athlete and the continuous correction from the coach will take the focus off the routine hard work. By using this repetitive style, we can hammer in the correct movements and therefore make them second nature. Okay, so let's assume that we have learnt to be technically correct. We have made our movements automatic, but can we play with these movements? Can we combine the exercises and perform them with various rhythms. We must learn this now. Since our first few childhood steps, we must try to avoid any kind of stereotype which changes our training into repetitious slave work. During all types of movement in exercise, I would endorse changing the rhythm of the movement. By doing this with a low intensity, we will ensure that we perform a technically correct movement. That is why sportsmen must learn to perform movements efficiently and effectively. must always vary the exercises, either changing the terrain, the equipment, the various rhythms, the range of movement and the combination of exercises.
One of the best ways of developing skill, balance and coordination are exercises with hurdles. These following four basic exercises assist us in strengthening the ankles, our general mobility and our overall stability of the pelvic area. They will also help our coordination, balance and a strengthening of the lumbar area. A variation in the height, the distance and the number of hurdles create different challenges for the athlete. By introducing these changes and systematically increasing the difficulty, we will progress step by step to a higher level. For example, to improve strength we will add a load with weighted sacks, but at all times we must maintain good technique regardless of the loading, the intensity or the range of movement. Traditional work with the barbell and multi-gym equipment provide a very efficient way to train with fixed grip on a single path of movement and a stable resistance, but can be too one-dimensional. During this phase it would be appropriate to add another dimension which is not so sterile. This method will stimulate complex multi-joint movement which will improve power and a stable core. I have found the best way to do this is with sand filled sacks which offer an unstable constantly changing resistance which will challenge the body to not only stabilize 
but also create power, especially during the conditioning phase. All athletes train to improve at their own discipline and of course they are keen to see how their work is paying off. I would however avoid throwing a javelin during this conditioning phase and I would endorse for example throwing a bar as demonstrated here. A mirror is often useful for instant feedback in many training situations. Throwing with sand filled sacks have the basic features of all the throws. For example, the legs extend to transfer energy up into the hips. It is here under simple conditions that we build the basics for advanced movements. These must become second nature and be perfectly executed during competition. The shot put can also be used as an exercise where I can develop my competitive edge. It is also a great way to disguise a lot of work. Shot put can therefore be an expression of all the power work gone before it but also a useful conditioning exercise. During this training phase, I must avoid being so specialised. When throwing various implements, I include a variety of movements in all directions to ensure a balanced development.
is also possible to throw using only your legs. This is not entirely true, but the movement for catapulting a medicine ball activates the required sequence. But even here, I immediately redress the balance by putting in some compensation exercises. To do this, all you need is some elastics and ankle belts. This part will illustrate for you that it is possible to train very well even when conditions are not ideal, for example when injured or when time does not allow a visit to the gym. You can even do a good workout within the confines of your own home. The exercises follow each other's circuit style and the focus is on compensation. By changing the position of the body, we are able to access most of the major muscles of the legs. It is imperative for all athletes to have a well-conditioned midsection. The muscles of the abdominals, the hips and the lower back are responsible for joining the powerful muscles of the upper body to the lower body. Without good strength in the trunk, the spine is a vulnerable structure. If we don't have good stability in this region, we will eventually have problems. To achieve this balance, we must implement an effective routine, which will involve a variation of exercises. have a combination of high repetitions of isometric and dynamic movements done with and without resistance. The individual must design a program which is specific to their own needs. When we think of a thrower, we might think of an athlete who spends a lot of time in the gym. When we think of the gym, 
it implies weightlifting. However, this must not be true during the general conditioning training. During this phase, I am only preempting what I will be doing in the next phase of training. Therefore, I will only use the deadlift to preempt the muscles that I will be using for the more dynamic lifts later in the training cycle. Otherwise, during this general phase, I will now make use of multi-gym. I will do this style of circuit training at a low intensity with high repetitions, including as many muscle groups as possible. I will arrange the exercises so that there are always the pair of muscles working. First of all, flexion, followed by extension. For example, flexion of the knee with the hamstrings will immediately follow extension of the knee with the quadriceps. This combination enables a faster regeneration of the muscles and it also will allow for a greater capacity of work. Remember one important rule, muscles must be stretched after a workout. I think enough has been said about stretching, so I only need to remind you of a few things. Stretching is not a form of torture, feeling pain while stretching will limit the scope of training and therefore is undesirable. Only sufficient extension to generate the feeling of the muscle stretching is necessary. The time we keep a muscle stretched is important. It should be between 30 and 60 seconds. Remember at all times to stress a technically correct movement. Compare here the incorrect stretching of the front part of the thigh and now the good one. I would recommend that you should repeat the exercise two to three times. When athletes have done their strength training they generally understand the importance of stretching and relaxing the muscles. They may however overlook the regeneration of the central nervous system and the mobilization of the spine. The back exercises I would employ exercise the spine over its entire length and in all possible directions. Systematically, I would work the neck, followed by the midsection, and finally the lower back. In three very different directions. First of all, flexion, followed by extension. then movement from side to side followed by finally rotation. The so-called crocodile torsion is beneficial for the lower back area to the point where we can often prevent or relieve back pain. For me, yoga exercises form the basis of good movement. A lot of people may think that this word yoga represents an incredible set of positions 
which only a sportsman can perform, and this is often off-putting. However, there are yoga exercises that everybody can use. They will perfectly stretch the whole body and strengthen the muscles which are often neglected. Yoga exercises evoke compensating mechanisms and moreover through them we can improve body awareness. By the nature of how we perform these exercises in a slow and controlled manner, we can focus on which muscles are working and which are relaxed. Each asana or exercise is a set of movements which are combined in a way to be able to strengthen some parts and stretch others. Doing these movements correctly is a therapy for your mind as well as your body. If you look back through the presentation you will see many references to the use of compensation. I firmly believe it is one of the most important tasks of the general conditioning training program. For example, the javelin is a discipline where the aim is to put all the energy gained in a coordination of muscles and levers into an implement that weighs 800 grams. Can you imagine what preparation is required before this huge explosion of effort? From the very first step in the run up of more than 20 meters in length until the last stroke of a whip required by a javelin thrower's arm. This is why we emphasize the need for compensation so heavily. There are many ways to do this. I would use a combination of pulleys, dumbbells and elastics. This part of the training session should contain a combination of isometric or fixing strength, a classic full range of movements, along with a kalinetic or a short change in direction. Again, I cannot stress enough the importance for good posture and also good execution of movement. This early phase of training is the time where we should do a very large volume of this type of work. We 
must protect our bodies all year round. Therefore, this type of work must play a part in all phases of the training throughout the year. It is easier to prevent injuries than it is to cure them and this applies to everyone, not just sports people. An athlete will spend a lot of his year at the athletics track. It would of course be beneficial to swap that athletics track for a different environment from time to time. For example, training in a swimming pool can represent the same loading as when using athletic equipment. The athlete is in a fixed position so as to isolate the required movement. Here there is an opportunity to perform different types of running exercises and isolated movements. Some swimming exercises with paddles on the hands and flippers on the legs. We have taken away the negative aspects of overloading the joints and from a health point of view it will also act prophylactically. Rollerblading can also offer a different dimension, challenging the stabilizers and giving potentially a cardiovascular workout or maybe even strengthening when some resistance or load is added. Other indoor options for accessing the same training effect could consist of using the bicycle, a rowing machine or the treadmill. However, the best training opportunities can be derived directly from nature. For example, hiking at a pace adequate for top sportsmen is not only a demanding functional activity, but thanks to the terrain, it also offers compensation and coordination exercise. We are all getting older, unfortunately some quicker than others. But we can all prepare for our old age by doing something about it while we're still young. Train hard, but most of all, enjoy it.